In this segment, we're going to deploy agents. In this environment, I only actually have two agents that I'm going to deploy to, and we have two different methods for deployment. I'm going to use both of them so they're not going to be uh, as rich as you would normally see if you're deploying to a large environment. First one is a one-off. We're going to just click on Protect Machine, and we're going to put in the host name. Put in our domain name slash username. And our password. Now because the agent's not installed, we get an error message that says, would you like to try to deploy the agent remotely? We say yes. And obviously uh, we can deploy the agent just simply by running the executable on the box and when we hit protect machine that agent will then just automatically be added but since no agent was found it's asking so we'll enter the password one more time a display name which I'm going to leave the same we'll choose a repository and then we'll choose an encryption key and then we hit deploy now we can see the agent deployment has started to monitor this we can go to the events tab we can see it here we can even expand and we can get more detailed information on the job itself or we can hit the details button which will bring up a complete dialogue that'll tell us everything that's going on we can also choose to open it in a new window so that we can have a separate window open uh, monitoring that particular event and then go back to the core um, where we can actually go to the next section under bulk deploy and we can choose any one of a number of ways all right we can manually enter something so we can, let's say we have a list of servers that we're going to deploy to and we would like to just simply enter them in one by one we can hit manual uh, we can also browse the vCenter environment uh, or directly on an ESX or ESXi host and pick up the machines that are running in that environment the other option which we're going to use here is Active Directory so we're simply going to put in the name of the domain. It has to be a fully qualified domain name. So we'll put in a, a demo dot local and our username, which is administrator, and our password. Then we can hit connect. And this will give us a list of all the machines within the domain. So we're going to choose the other machine, the AAEXCH, that's our exchange server, and then we'll go ahead and, and hit Add. That machine is now added to the list. We could have selected all the machines and deploy automatically. So the first thing we're going to do here is hit Verify. It's going to go and communicate with the exchange server and make sure that it can actually talk to it. Okay, so it is ready for deployment. We can go ahead and hit the deploy button. All right now we see another one has started here for AA Exchange. Back to our SQL event, we can see that it is waiting for machine availability. That means that it has already deployed the agent and it's now in the process of rebooting. After an agent is deployed, it does require a reboot. If you are looking to do this in a more manual fashion where you are not automatically rebooting, then you can run the executable, or we can use the bulk deploy and, and come up with some options there. So while we're waiting on that, let's go back to the main screen. We'll go to the events. And we can see that we have our other deployment running here. And it's at 13% for the Exchange server. We'll go ahead and open that in another window. Now the difference between the two, since I was deploying the agent on the SQL server as part of adding it for protection, once this process completes, it's automatically going to add it with the parameters that we've chosen. In other words, the repository, the encryption key. The Exchange server, on the other hand, is just going to do the deployment. Then we'll use the bulk protect tool to add it for protection. Okay, so this one is installing the package. 
that one is waiting for service availability which means the system is online now we're just waiting for the service to start we can go to the uh, actually if we saw here you can see the exchange server is on its way down and our SQL server is ready to be logged into we'll go ahead and log in we can go back to our core and you can see here AA SQL has succeeded so that task has completed we're waiting for the exchange server to come up now out here you can see that the SQL server has been added so we can see a summary of what's going on here in terms of um, the actual system you can see that we can see the SQL instance because we have the appropriate permissions it tells us version information it set it up with a default of uh, 60 minutes uh, so it's going to back up each volume every 60 minutes and we can go in and we can change that We go back to our exchange, waiting for machine availability. So that means we can go log in over here. Okay, we can go ahead and log in here. Okay, now it's protecting the remote machine. Actually, it did add it automatically. Perfect. So that it completed successfully. So as part of the initial deployment, the first thing that's going to happen on each one of these machines is it's going to take a base image. As you can see here, that process has begun. So it's taking a base image right now of the SQL server. It should automatically kick in for the Exchange server as well and that'll begin momentarily. By default, it'll do up to three machines at once, and you can go in and you can change that to back up as many as you select from 1 to 99. Probably best to stay somewhere in the 3 to 8 range, or unless, of course, your core happens to be running on a very fast, beefy machine with lots of memory and lots of CPU.